I think that uh, for me, all kinds of art goes together. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really matter exactly what you do, but as long as you express something. Uh, I guess that at that time I was quite tired of music in general and I wanted to try something new. Uh, so I started photography and then uh, after a while uh, the music came back to me. I always had a need to express myself musically. So. I guess I would more say that I'm a musician than a photographer. Um, because the music has always been with me much more than photography. And I've more been taking photography. Um, I mean, it's quite hard for me at least to see how the photography can get to a more serious point. Um, because it's quite hard to make money out of if you take pictures like I do. Uh, it's quite hard because I don't like to focus on different things, on different albums. But of course I would say that, you know, the, uh, the synthesis and, you know, this ambient path that lies in the music is really important uh, and uh, yeah I always try to create a sound in the very bottom that you maybe don't think about that much but that you, that you can at least feel really much uh, and I guess I, I think very much about the things that many others don't really recognize or think about uh, but those are very important to me of course, the Tall Harpa also played a huge role. Uh, but uh, on the coming album, it's much more focused on the vocals. So it has been much more important than, than to express the right thing in the right moment. So. You know, in Sweden we had something called VMOs. It's also the name of a great band, but um, VMO is could be translated into like melancholy. And I think all things that is related to uh, folk music and folk arts, they have this VMO in them, uh, like a melancholic atmosphere, uh, which is maybe not to be found as much in other places in the world. So I mean, I think that maybe it can be a bit exotic and different uh, to see this, but in a Swedish way, it's much common and, or very common to, to have. And yeah, it's, I think most Swedes understand why the reason for it. And I mean, there are Swedes, Swedes making uh, happy music as well. But for me, it's never, I mean, of course, people in the past were happy too. Mm -hmm. It's not like that, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, for me, it has been more uh, interesting with the uh, more melancholy songs. And there are many happy uh, major uh, folk tones as well, but I, uh, I've always been more fascinated by the, the sad and melancholic minor four tones. Um, they kind of move me in a whole different way. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, the thing is that I make all the music myself, mm -hmm. sing all the vocals myself, except for when I have guest vocals, of course. But I am the only member, and I guess you know, I used to play in bands before, but I never really, uh, I never really liked to work with people that much because I think in the end there's one 
or two makes the most of things than the others. You know, I mean, if you go to get to, together as a group, there's always someone who is part of that but doesn't actually do anything, mm -hmm. doesn't want to take any responsibility. And then I think it's better that you can do everything yourself and then uh, maybe have friends. I mean, Dennis, which I work with today, is a great drummer and you know, a lot of adventures, but he doesn't do a lot when it comes to the, the recording of the songs. It's more a, a session drummer, a live drummer, I'd say. But of course, he's, he's a big part of the as well. But um, I mean, I always see all new people. Also, on his uh, last album, uh, the coming one. But um, uh, I, I personally feel that I like it better to have the focus on um, what I wanted to press. And I don't need to, you know, reflect uh, or I can reflect things with others, but I don't need to for other people to tell me what to express and have help of them. So. I like to work a lot of personal things. Well, my father plays cello and my mother has been singing in the choir and my uh, both of my grandfathers were great mus musicians. But uh, none of my parents really work with music or anything like that. So, uh, but the music has always been around. As uh, so many in my family has been uh, into it. So it's come by a natural point, I think. No, I don't. I don't think I would call myself a metalhead today, really. Uh, I mean, I, I listen to metal, I listen to a lot of metal, uh, uh, but not maybe in the way I used to do in the past. I mean, I guess you have this, I mean, there are metalheads and there are metalheads, you know, and I guess I, I never really appreciate all kinds of metal. I don't appreciate metal just because it's metal, you know. I appreciate good music, and for me that can be in whatever kind of style at all, you know. I don't see myself as this kind of person who is a hardcore metalhead and listens to only to metal and nothing else, you know. And, uh, yeah. I maybe used to be more like that before, but yeah. I think it's come with age that I listen to everything now and you know, mostly just keep the focus on good music. Mm -hmm. uh, and the bands I listen to is uh, mostly a part of my label uh, and also somewhat outside of it. But uh, yeah, I mostly just listen to good music. Uh, but like I said, I, I think it can be in whatever genre. It doesn't really matter. Both yes and no. I mean, I can understand that you feel a hatred towards the romantic religions overall. But <clears throat> I think you have to kind of go quite far to really hate it. And uh, I would never share, or I could never understand, you know, why he has something against you know, Islam in general. I mean, maybe it has to do with the immigration or something, I don't know. But um, I think you always have to be, uh, you know, you know, tolerant towards new people. And I think religions uh, overall, you have this kind of bad view of, on them, uh, just because the most of the part you've seen is the political things about them. But really, it's not the religion itself that's bad. It's more the politics around it. People try to, you know, oppress people. Uh, true religion rather than, uh, you know, because the religion in the depth it wants people to be all right and feel good, you know, so I don't really think that. And then, and then of course, it can be more or less really uh, 
politics involved in the religion. But from my case, I can't really say that I have anything against any religion uh, in that matter. But I think it's also because I'm quite religious and um, interested in the things myself. And I've read quite a much about many religions, so I, I know what to criticize. And I know that there is nothing to be really afraid of. So, so yeah, I, no, I, I can't let's say that I share his views, I guess. But, uh, but yeah. But yeah, I, I, um, I definitely think that uh, if you are to hate one religion, then maybe you should hate all of them. But uh, yeah, I think that uh, all the Abrahamic religions are basically the same. I mean, there are differences, but uh, they are all on the one house, or I would say. I mean, uh, it's, it's, when it comes to, for example, the Norse religion, you can see today that there are many who can try to practice it, but um, the truth is that it's almost impossible because uh, many of the things have been forgotten. And it's also, you have to remember that uh, the religion itself was adapted to a certain place and also a certain time, a certain uh, area, I would say. So uh, I think it's quite weird when people try to take the Norse religion and make it to a world concept because I mean, the foundation of it was never meant to be that way. It's not an Abrahamic religion of one God and it's about all. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it's much more about uh, a very local Thing with local variations. You believe in the same thing, but it was a lot of local variations. That was it. <sighs> no, but I mean, uh, for example, the god Odin was never a god who was ruled, uh, was worshipped by the masses, rather, a god was worshipped by the aristocrats. Uh, and then you have Thor, who was more like a farmer's god, while he would never, in the same way, be worshipped by a god or by a king. <laughs> Um, so, uh, so yeah, uh, I think it's quite hard to to uh, go back to the roots and be, make it the same. But then, the more you know, the more you know what you actually can uh, continue with, or I'll say. So, yeah. Uh, but from my case, I. Uh, I usually try to see the philosophical thoughts, you know, what they actually thought, and uh, try to put it in my own world, I would say. Um, because, of course, ideas, even if they are bound and was created in a certain time, you can always be adapted to different ideas and, uh, to say, places. me, uh, basically, uh, has a very important part of my life is I can try to always see things as part of something greater, you know, I try to see if something negative happens in my life, I try to uh, see it as that could be a reason for it to happen. Uh, so in that way, kind of makes me uh, lesser negative about things. And I think that if you if you think that there is a reason with all, even no matter how bad it might be, it makes you, you know, think more positive about also negative things that happen. So it can make life much easier than to, if you only think that this happened just because of this. And, you know, if you just put yourself down on the bottom, in the end you will just go lower and lower. But if you turn it and think that 
it's not be a reason that this happened, but make you rise instead, uh, and you learn from it. And uh, yeah, so in, in that way, it's, it has changed a lot of my life. So uh, and I guess that's really important to remember. And you know, even if, for example, about death, even if you die, I believe that it would be something else. It's just that, like in life, something changes or if something is ruined, maybe it can come again, but it will, of course, be different. I think that's important to remember that, uh, you know, we will die, but we will live again. It will be different, but uh, yeah, it will be possible. No, but I, I, it was more of a, what do you call it? A mere coincidence because, uh, I mean, I, the more interest in, uh, in the Norse religion has always been there and folklore and everything. And then I, I started to study ethology, which is more like, um, well, Historically, it's been very much like folklore and such. Mm. That was what I wanted to learn more about. Uh, but then uh, I realized that it was much more based upon, you know, feminism and that kind of thing. Uh, so I just realized maybe it was not my kind of thing and it's not what I wanted to learn more about. So um, uh, instead, I chose history of religion uh, and yes felt that it was that's the right thing for what I was looking for so that's why I started to study it and uh, then in the same way or I think it was in the same time as I studied I uh, started Pumum so then they were kind of bound together you have a very few sources if you compare it to uh, many other places and many religions uh, but at the same time we have quite a lot if you dig deep uh, no but i mean you have also these outside sources telling you different mm -hmm. things and you also have uh, uh, later sources but i think the thing is of course you have to be critical when it comes to sources that is not part of the to say the original sphere, if it's not from inside the religion. Uh, and like you say, most of the sources come from outside, but I think uh, even if you have to be critical, uh, you have to know what to be critical about. Um, uh, so I think there is a lot to get from uh, other sources as well. Uh, and also much later sources from maybe the 14th and uh, such century, or, uh, uh, which is more, you know, it's, uh, because many many think that this religion, you know, it was abandoned and you know, Christianity took over, but of course it lived on for much longer than that uh, in people's memories. And the thing is that with religion, you can't really erase something you, if something is important for people, they always continue with the same kind of behavior and the same kind of things. They just change the name of it. Uh, and I think that's the reason why, you know, we have such a different, even if most of Europe today is Christian, we don't have the same kind of Christianity everywhere. I mean, even if you're Protestant, you do some things in one country, and other things in another country. For example, in uh, Sweden, we have this, uh, tradition around Halloween that we always go to the grave uh, and almost every Swedish people do this, they, they light a candle on the grave but for example when you look in other places they don't do this, they don't light a candle at the grave around Halloween uh, so uh, I think that could be related to something much much older uh, even if today it's more counted as you know, a Christian tradition, it doesn't really make sense to the Christian philosophy. Mm -hmm. uh, 
to go to the grave and light the candle. Uh, I think it belongs to something much older. Yeah. Um, but there is this local you know, variations that you, know, you can see that I think is actually related to something much older that maybe today it has another name but it goes much deeper. Uh, I think that especially in these countries in uh, Belarus and Russia that you have very many populations that has gone into the Orthodox religion. Uh, so, but I mean, even if you call them Christian today, maybe it, of course they're part of something older. And for me, it doesn't really matter exactly what name you put on it or what label for the behavior and what you actually do that counts. Depends on what kind of meaning you give them. And, uh, but I mean, for me, it doesn't, I have no kind of need to, to join a society that practice this religion because uh, in the foundation, in the arena of the Lord's religion, it was not like, the almost religion was never like, for example, a Abrahamic religion. You never had a priest told you what was right and what was wrong. Uh, it was very uh, very much based on traditions and uh, with very very much local variations uh, where nothing was right or wrong basically. So uh, um, I think it's quite hard or I, I don't understand at least why, why actually the need to, to join a society to do that. Uh, it, it depends. I mean, for example, it, if you give a certain meaning to Odin, for example, then of course it can make sense in whatever society. Mm -hmm. uh, but you have to kind of know that he was a god of something in particular and uh, he had like a meaning, mm -hmm. an area where he was the most common to be worshipped. Uh, it's the same with the other gods. Um, but of course you have to kind of see your own position to know if it's, it makes sense or not. I think. Um, yeah. Well, <laughs> I would say it's very much shallow and it's never, I mean, I can't really say that it has anything in, in, in common with my own thoughts, my own view of the old world religion. Uh, and I think with this series, basically they just, you know, uh, like you, I've been saying all over this interview, for me, the philosophy is really important. Mm -hmm how you thought, but it feels like in these series, and movies and everything, they just take modern day people and put mm -hmm. them in the clothes of the past. But that doesn't really change much of the content. I mean, it could be a series that could take place in any, any time, with their kind of behavior, they haven't really uh, changed their mindset. Mm -hmm. Maybe they make something, uh, you know, something that I've taken from the sources. But overall, it just feels like they have, you know, put the modern day human in uh, close to the past. And uh, for me, it doesn't feel really that real in a way. Um, and uh, yeah, you could discuss if it's good or the scene, and I, I guess for me, making this kind of music, it's maybe profitable, I'd say, but I would rather see that people in a much more deep way care for their own traditions and religions, um, because that's like the, the very foundation of it, to, to, uh, to honor your forefathers, and I think for me it doesn't make sense to honor the forefather of someone else. Uh, you know, 
it's much more logic to go back to Euro rules because I mean all rules are equal, aren't they? But uh, and I mean you also have very much the same kind of traditions, but of course local variations. But overall, I don't understand this reason why so many have to you know turn to the old Norse because. Why don't they care about their own, uh, you know, roots? Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yes. Because for me, to uh, to dig deeper and really understand all, all those religion, you also have to live at the places, and see the places where they live. You know, uh, to really understand it. And I think if you live in the city in, in a city in the United States, like New York. Yeah, you know, much harder to you know really relate to what they actually meant in the life that they lived. Uh, so you, you don't have to be a Scandinavian, uh, but because it has nothing really to do with you know, down to the place you live and to really understand the place. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, but I also think that it's the same. You know, even if you're uh, Swedish and you live in a really big city like Stockholm. Uh, with only concrete and stone, don't really can relate a lot to the to our tradition that was very much surrounded with uh, with nature and you know the circle of life, you know. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's what I think at least. Of course, I, I guess that people there are many people who disagree with me on that point, but. I've always been thinking that for me it doesn't really make sense in that way. Of course, they are; they can think whatever they want, but I would rather see that they uh, that they uh, care more about their own traditions because their own traditions is just that they have to have to dig deep and find out more about them. You know? The big problem today, I think, is that many people they, they watch these kind of series and they think like, oh, it was just like that. You know, but the thing is that you can't really see, uh, watch a series and think that this is the truth. This is how it was, mm -hmm. because you have to remember it's you know, it's main, meant to sell in a way with this series. So uh, you can't really use that as a base of information, uh, you have to, you know, go to, it's much better to, if you want to find out more, it's much better to go to, uh, go and read books and uh, preferably academic books mm -hmm. to get into it. Um, but also, you know, use your, or also, you know, visit the places, visit the graves and the, uh, the places where these people actually lived. And see by yourself to kind of create your own mindset and see for, for yourself how it actually was and how they thought uh, rather than to see you know or watch a series that's not even recorded in Scandinavia and use that as a base for your information because for me it doesn't make sense. I, um, I I do watch a lot of movies and things, uh, but I would never I, I would not say that they are really inspire me so much. What I do with the project overall, when I actually read, I read mostly academic books. You know, so I can like some literature. Uh, for example, I'm a big Tolkien fan, but he was also you know. Uh, Professor of languages, mm -hmm. so I was uh, very well read in the Norse religion, for example. Uh, so I guess maybe that's the reason why I like his work so much because he influenced the work. Yeah, I like. I really liked uh, uh, the old films, the first three movies, 
mm. even if they're really different from the book, I thought that they at least had you know, a good atmosphere. But uh, I can't really say the same for the Hobbit movies. Then again, that was more of a uh, children's movie, but I think you really, uh, you really fail on the atmosphere on that one with all the CGI and mm. everything. I think those were quite ruined. So I don't like them at all. Uh, I think it was, you know, they really dragged out too much of okay. Tolkien's work because, you know, it was just one book which turned into three movies. And also, when I'm not a big fan when you actually, it's one thing to, to, uh, to, uh, to add or to, uh, remove things that you can't, you know, include in the movie because, of course, it has a limited time. But when you, you know, uh, when you add things like this love story, you know, mm -hmm. I think it becomes a bit too sincere and childish in a way because it was never really the point of the book, so. Uh, but yeah, in general, I, I really love Tolkien's book. Uh, but I think the books are, of course, better. But I'm a, a really big fan of more, you know, dark movies like uh, Lars von Trier. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. I really like his movies because they're like different from other kind of movies. And they're kind of, you can't, you know, it's, it's quite hard to watch them. And I also saw this movie, this was actually a horror movie, uh, Midsummer, Midsummer. They are uh, Swedish tradition, they, they, uh, Really play around with it in a really nice way, I think. Uh, so, yeah, really, really enjoy that one as well. I would sum up my musical taste that as long as it's atmospheric, uh, I can like it. Uh, but, uh, yeah, like I said before, I have quite wide taste, but uh, yeah, it can be, of course, sorry, in different ways. Uh, but I'm a big fan of classical music. For me, that part has quite deep meaning and goes back to uh, partly sources, uh, all our sources that tell about this. But for me it is uh, also the meaning of being a sacrifice uh, that we are included in. You know, it's more more of a, of a ritual and, uh, or how to say than actually you know, a sacrifice. I mean, it is a sacrifice, but it's it's quite hard to explain it in a simple way. It goes quite deep. Um, it's more about you know uh, making or taking part of something greater, you know. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I guess you could call it a sacrifice, but for me it has a quite deep meaning. I don't really know if I could call it a sacrifice in the way that many other things, but I think it's about sacrifice, but yeah, it's more a part of a, of a ritual, I would say. Yeah, it's my first visit here. I really like the country. It, uh, it reminds me a bit of Russia. It's uh, really warm people and everything, so I'm really uh, eager to play here and see how the audience is like. Um, if they will be like the Russians or more calm, um, we'll see. Enjoy the concert and uh, also uh, 
the coming album that's about to be released in the end of March. But that will also be played here yeah, before uh, almost in full tonight. I hope they will appreciate it. Let me